Hi, my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this lesson on computer fraud. Computers have really changed our world. They've made things easier, faster, and more organized. But computers can be used to do harmful things too. Criminals can use computers to steal from people or businesses. They can use them to destroy someone's website, to create destructive viruses, and even to take control of someone else's computer. Computers have become so common that we rely on them to do everything for us. So, if a computer breaks down or is misused by a criminal, we're often helpless. So, you're saying that because we rely on computers so much, criminals are actually using them to harm us? That's right. Sure, that's freaky. Well, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain different terms associated with computer fraud, and describe measures that can be taken to prevent computer fraud. Have you ever thought it might be fun to secretly go through someone else's computer? Maybe just browse around a bit, check out what useful stuff there is and make some copies. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, doing any of these things is illegal and you could be prosecuted. Illegal? Why? Well, this is what the law says. A person can be prosecuted if they gain unauthorized access to a computer even though no damage is done. So if you access someone's computer without their permission, you could be found guilty of breaking the law. But why is looking around without permission such a big deal? I mean, it's not like you're stealing or anything. No, it's not stealing if you're just looking around, but it's still illegal. I mean, think how you would feel if someone went into your room when you're not at home and looked through your cupboards. Mm, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Even though invading someone's privacy is illegal, some people have no respect for the law. Hackers and crackers, in particular, are people with no respect for the law. Hackers and crackers? <laughs> what are those? Hackers are computer experts who break into the computer system for the challenge. When hackers break in, it's usually not done to cause damage to the computer. Instead, hackers want to see if they can get past the security system protecting the computer without getting caught. So hackers are like burglars who don't take anything. But Dawn, when I start up my computer, I have to enter in a password and a logon name. Isn't that supposed to stop hackers? Yes, your computer's security system is supposed to stop unauthorized people from accessing your computer. But that security system is exactly what the hacker is trying to break. The tougher the security system, the greater the challenge for the hacker. Hackers usually target government and big businesses' computers because they have the best protected systems. So how do hackers get access to someone else's computer? Hackers usually access their victims' computers through the internet or another kind of network. They do not have to be in the same room as the victim's computer to do a hack. When a hacker is successful, they will often leave behind a sign so that people will know their system has been hacked. So if I'm able to get into and read files on someone else's computer over a computer network, then I'm an illegal hacker. So what's a cracker? Well... Crackers are computer experts who break into computer systems for the purpose of performing a crime. They might want to steal valuable information or they might want to destroy an important program by planting a virus. Well, that's just not right, eh? <laughs> no, it's not. And in fact, any kind of action where someone uses lies and deception to access a computer for their own personal or financial gain can be called computer fraud. And computer fraud is a crime. A new breed of criminal has been born, using computers as their weapon of choice. Well, can't the police stop them? Laws are continually changing to close loopholes that allow criminals to get away. However, computer technology is developing so fast and with it new crime as well. It is therefore difficult for law enforcers to keep track of them. One of the most widespread of these crimes is internet fraud. Internet fraud? <laughs> now what's that? Internet fraud is a criminal scheme which involves one or more components of the internet. So it's like when you use the internet to rip other people off. That's right. Two types of internet fraud are called phishing and spoofing. Phishing and spoofing. <laughs> Those are weird names. <laughs> they are weird. A good way to explain phishing is to think about phishing. 
When someone goes fishing, they throw a line into the water and wait for a fish to bite. While in fishing, criminals send out hundreds of emails to strangers asking for their personal details and wait for someone to reply. But why would anybody send their personal details to a stranger? I mean, that's just silly. Well, these criminals are clever. They make their emails look like as if they are from a reliable source, like a bank or a well-known company. But why would a company want your personal information? Well, each email gives a different reason for needing your details. For example, some say that you're owed some money and will get paid if you just send them your bank account details. Others say that you will win a prize if you reply. But if you do reply, the fraudster then takes the information and uses it either to commit fraud in your name or to steal directly from your bank account. But think about it. If it is your bank, then they already have your personal details, so they shouldn't be asking for it over email. That's right. A genuine financial organization like a bank would not usually ask for your username, account number or password by email. They will only exchange this kind of information over a secure connection. So remember, you should always think carefully before replying to a strange email. If there's something weird about the email, wait and check it out. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this, but what's the other word you used? Spoofing. The word spoof usually refers to copying something in such a way as to make fun of it. For example, some movies are spoofs. They imitate another movie or type of movie and exaggerate certain aspects of it to make fun of it. Ha, <laughs> you mean like scary movie, it rips off other horror films. <laughs> That's right. In computers, spoofing is when someone takes an important website like the homepage of a bank and creates a close copy of that website. They will then publish their spoof website on the net with a similar address to the original site. That doesn't sound very funny. Well, it's not. A spoof website is meant to fool people into thinking that it's the real thing so that they will enter their personal details. So when you try to log in with your ID name and password, the criminal takes these details and can commit fraud with them. Mm, that's quite clever. <laughs> Fraudsters usually are. You have to be on your toes if you don't want to get fooled. Okay, I'm sure I can spot a spoof a mile away. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at a website. See if you can spot any clues that'll tell you whether it's a spoof or the real thing. As you can see, this website offers help to secure your online shopping experiences. It asks you to verify your details so that your secret key can be sent to you. Now, what do you think? Is this a real website or is this a spoof? Hmm, although the site looks very professional, I think it's a spoof. Okay, but why? Because there are so many spelling mistakes and a proper bank site shouldn't have these kinds of mistakes. That's right, Salai. Did you notice the word internet was spelled incorrectly with a small letter? Okay, Salai, what else did you see? Well, I also noticed that the words until you will be informed of success did not make sense. Good, and anything else? No, that's about all. Well, what about the personal details? Mm, they look okay to me. Well, most financial institutions will never ask for personal details, especially credit card details, over the web. Also, all secure websites must have a lock icon on the bottom of the page. Also, successful should have been spelled successfully. Okay, now I get it. It really makes me think carefully about the sites I visit. Very good. Now, let's look at the Genuine Visa website. What do you notice about it? Hmm, this one looks more professional to me. What makes you say this? Well, all the contact information looks correct. There are no spelling mistakes or funny physical addresses. The web page is simple to understand and it does not ask for any personal details. Excellent! Obviously, spoof websites are annoying and dangerous. Many companies are trying to stop criminals from setting up fraudulent websites by exposing the spoof. In particular, the Anti-Phishing Working Group is trying hard to crack down on this kind of computer fraud. So, the moral of the story is, be careful. You could lose a lot of money to computer fraud. If you want to make real money, honestly, you could get involved in crime prevention technology that helps stop the criminals. Hmm, what do you mean? Because internet fraud is such a big problem, 
companies are prepared to pay lots of money for fraud prevention technology. For example, one of South Africa's most famous entrepreneurs, Mark Shuttleworth, made his money by creating a fraud prevention system called Thought. I've heard of him. He's the guy that went up to space, say, and made so much money that he gave each of his workers one million rand. And now he gives money to good courses. <laughs> That's right. And this is how he did it. Mark Shuttleworth studied finance and information systems at the University of Cape Town. And when he graduated at age 22, he founded a company called Thought. The company started in his parents' garage in Cape Town. Within four years, Thought grew into one of the largest issuers of digital certificates in the world. Hmm, now, what is a digital certificate? A digital certificate is a way of checking that electronic files, such as spreadsheets and databases, are genuine. A genuine file means that you know who wrote the document and that it has not been changed in any way. A digital certificate can only be issued by a certification authority like Thought for a fee. These certificates are used by secure e-commerce sites which deal with money and other confidential details. When someone buys a certificate, it allows the receiver of a message to confirm the identity of the sender by contacting the certification authority. In this way, the receiver knows that the sender is who they say they are. It also verifies that the message is not a virus. A digital certificate contains your name, a serial number, expiry dates, a copy of your public key, and a digital signature. Hold on, now what is a public key? <laughs> a public key is a code that you use to keep electronic information secure. Using this code means that your information cannot be read by any person who you do not want to see this information. I see, but what is a digital signature? A digital signature is a code that is attached to an encrypted message. This signature verifies the identity of the sender and that the message has not been tampered with or changed. So Mark Shuttleworth made his millions by issuing digital certificates? Well, not quite. By the year 2000, Thought had issued certificates to about 42% of the world's secure e-commerce web service. Then, an international company, Verisign, offered to buy out Mark's company for $500 million. Mark sold, and today, Verisign continues to supply companies around the world with digital certificates. So, he really made his money by having a good idea. Wow! From a garage to $500 million in just four years. That's really impressive. Yes, it is. It's a remarkable story. Here is your task for today. Write down your own explanations of the terms hacker, cracker, phishing and spoofing. Do some research to find out what policies three different banks have in place to prevent online fraud. Well, thanks for joining us for this lesson on computer fraud. I hope that you're more aware of the dangers of computers and will take care. And as always, don't forget to check out our website for more information. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Bye.